Okay, let's get into the fun stuff. So we are going to be talking about two different categories for racing shoes. Uh, we're going to split it into short distance, which we're kind of defining as the 10K and down. And then we're going to talk about long distance, which we're kind of talking half marathon up. You could argue that short distance could be 13 down and then just the marathon and above. Um, so kind of play with it as you will in terms of like you listener, like kind of how you're thinking about this. If you think about it differently based on what's short and long for you, but we're kind of going the 10 K down half marathon up, uh, in our categories for this. So I'm excited to hear from y'all on what you think. There's been a lot of racing shoes that have been put out this year. I think there's the revamps for the companies have been not just upper updates most of the time, but a lot of times it's total overhauls of these shoes or new offerings. So excited to hear what y'all think, David, let's start off with you on the short short distance what would be your pick and why yeah so short distance i'm thinking 5k 10k road mile if you had to um light snappy little bit firmer ride i don't like a whole lot of soft pillowy cushion underneath me if i'm trying to go fast fast you know um so for those that know that i like the alpha fly alpha fly 2 gained a little bit of weight in the second version and it, the drop came down and the shoe just the, the overall profile of it not quite as aggressive and it's not something that i like running fast fast in so alpha fly is not my pick for the <laughs> for the short distance uh for this year oh of course it's got to be like a full arm width away hold on oh there you we got go. this okay i'm going a6 metaspeed edge plus couple of reasons why. So turbo foam has always been a little bit firmer to me. It has a little bit more resilience. Mm -hmm. It still has a balance. It's still a new generation midsole. Has the carbon fiber plate. Geometry is still kind of forgiving in this one too. I mean, we're looking at 40 in the, in the heel, 32 in the forefoot, right? Eight millimeter stack, I believe. I mean, eight millimeter drop. Yeah. 39, 39 31. 31, 39, 31. Okay. Still close. Um, more yeah. balanced <laughs> geometry. Nothing super crazy going on here. You know, gently beveled in the heel. Toe spring's a little bit sharp up front, but at the very end. It's not like, it's still pretty balanced throughout. So you just kind of always feel like you're a little bit forward. And one thing I've noticed in this shoe, and you could probably even see it if you're a listener, it's dirty. I can take this off of the road. And so it's one of the few mm -hmm. racing shoes that I can actually take on a dirt workout. Like, I'm not talking like, technical trails or anything but like if you're doing like a little bit of california cross country or things like that like a mount sack type course or um yeah if, if it's runnable terrain like you can do it the traction's pretty good so if i'm going 10k and down like including cross country races assuming it's not like sloppy rainy muddy like you know i mean everyone's got a different definition of cross country i'm from california so things are tend to be a little bit more runnable out here but um this would be my choice. It's it's versatile. It can go quick. I feel grounded. I feel connected. I feel, I don't know. I feel like I can trust the shoe at pretty much any pace I want to do it at. And that includes the track as well. So very versatile yeah. shoe. There is one shoe that got an honorable mention in this one for me as well. Also an arms with the weight. Real quick, Puma Fast R. Um, Puma Fast R, just a fun shoe, man. Like it's EVA yeah. is a little bit firmer up in the heel here transitions you really quick you can see how sharp that bevel is just drops you onto that forefoot kind of extends from like the eh, midfoot ish kind of all the way through the forefoot and that's that nitro elite soft bouncy p backs um infused nitrogen infused p backs right there up front and the i mean it's just got some bounce so you're just like always forward and it's a really fun shoe to run like a road 5k 10k in. so both awesome yeah. options cool Matt, what about you? What's your pick? By a landslide, I gotta give it to the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3, and that's for multiple reasons. I think the biggest thing is this shoe was completely redone. I, I enjoyed the first two versions. Um, they were solid, but it just, it was missing that last little piece, right? A piece that made it kind of inherently a little more stable, more snappy, really elevating it to that super shoe level. And all the changes that happened with this shoe definitely did that. And it blew, for me, everything else out of the water. So big things is even though supposedly this is still power on PB, it feels very different than the previous version. There is a little bit more stack height. So it's, yeah. if I get that, 
Um, 39 and a half, and a half in the yeah. heel, 31 and a half in the forefoot. So eight millimeter drop, eight millimeter just like last time. A little more stack cut underfoot, very well designed bevel still. And I think the heel got a lot bevel, lot bevel, lot better. Upper is super <laughs> light still. It's a little more snug than the last version, so it fits a little more secure. But what my favorite things were was that there are now sidewalls here on both the medial and lateral side. They did that really well. And then they filled in the midfoot while using some geometry to still keep weight low, which this thing is 7.2 ounces. They almost dropped, they dropped like 0. 0.6, no, 0. 0.3 ounces off this. And it feels super light underfoot. I can turn over really well. When I first put this on, this felt kind of, this felt more intense than my first experience with the Vaporfly. Where I was like, whoa, it's like this bounces, it moves very well. As I almost have 100 miles on this, it's broken in really nicely. I've also found I can, you know, warm up, cool down. It's great. But for 5K, 10K, half marathon, this is going to be my go-to. This is what I'm going to grab because I want to feel confident. I want to feel just a teeny bit of soft guidance here so I don't have to worry about that. It might not be enough for a lot of people, but for me, it it did great. Yeah, I think one of the things, we, we mentioned this in the previous episode, but uh, we partnered with Saucony on the their Tempest project. And um, when we were out there, we were talking to them about this shoe, and they said they didn't change the formula yeah, for, for the... Them. For the Power Run PB, they, you know, we talked to their materials person, uh, Andrew Paulson. She said they didn't change it. Um, so unless that changed since we were with them, which was close to the release of this shoe, um, it's 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 what it it's what it has been. It's just how it's packaged in terms of the stack height and the geometry that made it feel a lot different. So maybe just a couple more millimeters uh, made it different. So it's, I think that's pretty cool. I think we didn't mention the the weight for the Metaspeed Edge, which is seven point oh, yes. four ounces. To so um, those are those two are pretty comparable in terms of weight. You got 7.4 and 7.2. Um, I'm a, I'm personally a big fan of the pink that they oh, rolled yes. out their endorphin pro Clean line. in. I think it's just shoe. super sharp. And then the upper was kind of the in, inspired by the change they did with the endorphin pro plus. So they, they took that upper, which is super light track spike, like, and just threw it on there. I think it does a great job too. Um, okay. So I, this is my full disclosure. My answer for this whole thing is is like a, I don't know. It's a hypothetical situation. I've mentioned in the previous episode, I've had some injury stuff. So my racing this year has, I haven't been racing. I've just been trying to be healthy and be running. So I haven't thought much about running, racing, not running, but racing a 5K, 10K half marathon. Um, I did I did run one half marathon this year in the Topo Spectre, but I didn't race it. I was just, just getting the distance in. Um, but I did, so this is a hypothetical. If I were to go race a 5K this weekend, what would I choose? And you know, the shoe that I actually have the most experience running fast in this year is a shoe that just dropped at a very limited uh, amount, and it is the Puma Nitro Elite 2. And I ran a, a two mile pickup with the high school team. I ended up running it in a like 557 average pace between the two miles, and I, I think I negative split it, so it, which is surprising because I wasn't, you know, working out a lot. But I really liked the first Nitro uh, Elite. Which I actually, if I if that shoe was created this year, that would still be my pick for short distance. I love how that shoe feels. You feel super grounded, but it's soft and it's got some flexibility through the forefoot. I actually love the plate design in that shoe. There's a lot, which it's all different in this one. They they went from that kind of bifurcated plate in the first version. Now this is a full length plate in the new version um, with without that split. So it's a little bit more rigid up front. It doesn't have that same flexibility, but it still has a lot of the same character where that it's softer foam, but you don't feel like you're just floating, excuse me, all over the place. And I do think that the upper is improved over the first version. Um, so this would be my pick, but take it with a grain of salt because I haven't had a ton of experience. It's just the hypothetical. If, if I had to go race a short distance race, I would, I would throw this guy on. Um, and I just like how it's a, it's more of a stable platform than on some of these other aggressive shoes. So Matt, you got a weird I, face. I would on say based on your pace during that two mile effort, that sounds like a two mile race. So for, so, right. That's true. I mean, I went all out. That's for sure. So, yeah. Therefore, that's for sure. Um, therefore, did you kick? Therefore, would that have been? I'm joking. What's that? I've got, I've got, there's oh. an inside joke with some of the guys I run with. Like, if you don't kick, it's a tempo. <laughs> you can, like, go <laughs> basically all kick? out, but you don't kick. 
That's, that's, I kicked. I'll call it a kick. Did you kick? <laughs> I'll say I kicked at the end. Um, oh, I should say, you know, we don't know for sure on this stuff yet because it's still a pretty new shoe. 36 millimeters, 28, uh, but it might be a 6 millimeter drop, but it's such a light shoe. The first version was super light too. It's 6.7 ounces, so it's it's a super light shoe, 200 bucks, um, so it's in that premium price category, but it, it's a fun shoe to run in. I really like Nitro Elite Foam, so it, it's a it's a winner for me.